In this section, we are going to cover functions. And let's talk about what functions are and what purpose they serve. So far, we covered some basic data types like integers and strings, and we also learned how to change them using functions and methods. On top of that, we also learned how to change the flow of the code using if else, match, while, for statements, and stuff like that. So we are basically able to create simple programs that work just fine. But all of this only gets us so far. And to understand why, let's do a metaphor. And let's say we want to build a car. And the tools we have learned about so far are the basic parts that you would need for a car, like screws, pipes, wires, plastics, and all the most basic parts you can have for a car. The problem is, these parts don't really make a car. We don't build a car out of plastics and wires. Instead, we build a car out of an engine, out of steering systems, out of control systems, batteries, and stuff like that. Meaning what we want to do in our code is to take these simple parts here and use them to create more complex systems, like a control system or like an engine. And once we have these more complex systems, we actually create the entire car. And in this analogy, a function is one of these more complex systems, like the engine, the control, the battery. They are just more complex parts, but they're still made out of these simple bits here. And the main purpose of this is to make our code more reusable and more organized. So what we are going to focus on for this section is to combine these simple tools to create more complex parts. And that is the main purpose of functions. Later on, we are going to learn even more powerful ways to organize your code using classes, but that comes later. For now, we are just going to look at functions. And the one really important thing I already want you guys to understand is that a function is simply a block of code that can be reused. We're not really learning anything fundamentally new. Instead, we are just putting our pre-existing code into a simple block or container and then we're using this container to execute that code. That's basically it. Although to use functions, we need a two-step process. Let's talk about that one, and then we actually create some functions. For a function, we first of all have to create the function. And this is where we are adding all of the code to the function, or well, we are creating the code inside of the function. Once we have that, we have to do what is called calling the code. This is a very common word, Calling a function means you're executing the function or you're telling the function to run and execute the code inside of it. And you can also add information into the function when you call it. We will see that in just a second. But with all of that covered, let's actually create some basic functions. And this we should do in our code. So let's have a look at that. And to create a function, we need a special keyword. And this is called DEF, short for define. And now we need a name for a function. And in here, we have the same naming convention that we have for variable naming. So for example, a name for a function could be test underscore function, and this would be perfectly fine. And once we have the name, we need a pair of brackets. And those you always need. I will explain in a second what they actually do. I am going to leave them empty for now though. And now we need a colon. And if I now press enter, I am going to be in one level of indentation. This space here tells Python, or about this indentation, that any code we have inside of here belongs to this function. Really important to understand. It works like a for loop or an if statement, same principle. And now in here, we can write any code we have already seen. For example, I could print hello, I could create a new variable, let me call it test, and test could just be one plus two, and then I could print test. We can write the very same code in here that we can write in normal code. And once I have this, I have created a function. So this is the first step. And now to call it, I need my test function, so the name of it, and then add brackets afterwards. And this entire process here is called calling a function. Essentially, every time you are adding brackets after the name of a function, you are calling that function. And what that essentially means is you're telling Python you want to execute all of this code here. If I run the code, 
we can see hello and free. So this hello here and the result of one plus two printed in this line. And what I can also do now, I can duplicate this call of the function and run this again. And we can see this code run or executed multiple times. And I hope you can already see why this is useful. You can basically create some specific functionality in here and then execute it wherever you need. So if you had some really complex code and you wanted to organize it better, this is one of the main ways you would be doing it. And let's actually do another example. And for this one, let's do something more specific. I want to create a calculator. And again, I need brackets. And all I really want to do in here, I want to create a variable result. And this result should be the result of number one plus number two. And once I have that, I want to print my result. Meaning this would be an incredibly simple calculator that just adds two numbers together. But for this to work, we kind of have a problem. And that is how can we get this and this number here? And for that, we are going to need these brackets here. And those brackets are called parameters. And what they mean is, let me add them actually. I can add a parameter for number one and a parameter for number two. And let's actually do the entire function. Now, when I call this calculator and execute it with brackets, I have to add arguments in here. Let's say two and three. If I run this now, I can see five, which is the result of two plus three. Now, why did this happen? Essentially, this number one here and this number two are both parameters. And a parameter is essentially a variable that you can only use inside of the function. Meaning this number one here, we can use as a variable inside of this function. Same for this number two here. And then the value for these two parameters or these two variables inside of the function come from the information that we pass into the function when we call it. Meaning this number two here is going to be the value for number one and number three is going to become the value for number two. Let's actually do this the other way around. When we are calling the calculator by calling the name of the function and adding brackets afterwards, Python is looking what happens inside of the bracket. And right now we are adding two numbers, two and three. And next up, Python looks at the actual function and the parameters. And right now it has number one and number two. And now what happens is that Python is going to add the first argument, which right now is this two. It is going to assign the value of this two to the first parameter. And then the second argument, so this three here, is going to be passed into the second parameter. And that way num1 becomes two and num2 becomes three. And once we have that, we can use those two numbers like variables inside of the function. Although one thing you do have to be aware of is that both of these parameters only exist inside of the function. Meaning if I try to print num1 outside of the function, I would get an error. And that error is name one is not defined because this name one here only exists inside of this function. So in the code, besides calling the calculator once, I could also call it twice and add different numbers, let's say 10 and 20, and I would get the result again. So again, this function here we can call multiple times. And well, with that, we already have the basics of functions. So let's do an exercise. And what I want you guys to do is to work on this calculator and give it some more functionality. It should still accept num1 and num2 for two numbers you can add. But besides that, the user should also be able to add an operation, so a third parameter. And I want you guys to add a plus and a minus operation here. So for example, if the user adds, let's call it the better calculator, in here we can add one, two, and then we can add minus, or we can add plus. And obviously, if the user does that, we get either plus or minus operations. Now, first of all, I have to create 
a new function by writing better calculator, the name of our function. And now in here, I need three parameters. I want num1 and num2 again. And besides that, I need an operation or operator, doesn't really matter what you call it. And one important thing really quick, since these parameters are always relevant only to the function, we can reuse names here quite easily. Meaning to Python, these num1 and num2 parameters and these up here have no relation whatsoever. So don't worry about naming here. Now, what I want to do inside of this function is to add an if statement. And then here, I want to check if the operation is plus, and if that is the case, my result should be num1 plus num2. And once I have that, I want to print, let's do this a bit more fancy. I want to add an f string. And in here, I want num1 plus num2 is equal to the result. And we can actually try this. So I already call the function with one, two, and plus. And the plus we have in this if statement here. Meaning if I run this, I get one plus two is three. And let me comment out these two lines here so it's a bit cleaner. And one important thing here, the indentations continue on each additional level. I guess we haven't talked about this too much yet, but inside of this function, all of the code has to be on one level of indentation. And now if we use more code inside of this, like an if statement, for example, we have to add the code for this if statement inside of another level of indentation. And that way Python knows that this code here belongs to the if statement and all of this code here belongs to the function. It's really important to understand indentation early on. Python uses it extensively to organize the code. If I add a minus to this calculator, we get nothing because we have no if statement for any of this. But we can add it quite easily because I want to add an L if statement. And in here, operation, I want to check for minus. And now for this one, I can just copy all of this. And now the result should be num1 minus num2. And then for printing all of this, this should be num1 minus num2. And now if I run all of this again, I get one minus two is negative one. That seems right. And now I can copy this line, change the numbers. Let's say, I don't know, some larger numbers. Let's add a plus here. This is not how you spell that. Let's run this now. And we are getting something that looks pretty good. And I hope now that we have some better examples, you can see the value of functions. This is a really good way to organize your code because when we actually execute the code, we just have one line, but this one line executes a whole bunch of code. And in actual programming examples, you might have hundreds of lines inside of one function. And what you see most of the time is that programmers create all of the functions at the top of the file. And then a bit further down, the actual code logic is written. And that way you create some pretty good logic that is quite easy to follow. And you could just change some functions here if you wanted to. Now with that, we have basic functions. Although you can do quite a bit more with functions. And the next part we have to talk about is arguments and parameters. So let's talk about that in the next section.